both made ground, uh, the, the, the career of being a composer, we, we've all made ground, but we've also lost ground as well. Uh, certainly in relation to, to other um, art forms, um, a writer publishes a novel and, and it, it's, it's news, you know, whereas a composer has a new uh, album out, which I, which I do, uh, it, it's hard enough to, to get uh, that out uh, into the papers, into the public, and I rely totally uh, on the internet uh, uh, to do that. We don't have the audiences we used to have, probably because the music is free uh, and it's been very bad for, for, for musicians uh, and there are no labels left, you know, the, the whole thing has collapsed in many ways, but we, we struggle on uh, being uh, one-man bands, so, so to speak. Irish composers in general um, are not celebrated, uh, you know, the, the, the new, the latest work uh, is not uh, taken as much notice of, certainly in the wider uh, uh, print uh, and, uh, you know, in, in the media in general, I think. I, I always remember a conversation I had with an, with an aunt of mine in the 1970s. I, I met an aunt of mine who lived in England who I didn't really know that well, but she came over and visited my mother and I told her something like in 1974, I said, I do know who's listening, you know, who's listening? And she said, don't worry about that, just keep making the music. <clears throat> and there's still, that's still really uh, the only way I, I, I could function. Uh, and I'm making the music uh, more intensely and more of it uh, than ever uh, in my life. And that's probably maybe something to do with uh, the aging process, you know. But the opportunity and the amount of composing I've been able to do is a once in a lifetime chance. If I had a sixth sense and if I was 18 and 19, uh, now I'd be so worried about when I get the work done that I've been able to do in another, you know, given another chance in another generation or two down the line in this different world that we are in now, um, I wonder would I have those opportunities. I have a sort of uh, nightmare scenario in my head of uh, living on my own in some tenement somewhere in, in Dublin with no money and wishing to uh, get involved in music but being uh, lonely and penniless and not having an opportunity and for my whole life decades to go by with me sitting in a room with with noisy neighbours. This is a fantasy, uh, I mean a horrible fantasy. All that's really required is that you have a, a deep uh, internal sense of, of how music could be and music isn't and could be and you're the one that can do the could be part of it. Uh, uh, I don't know if the technology is, is uh, makes me, I don't know if the newer technology makes me a better composer. I don't think it does. Because I throw stuff together not quite knowing how it's going to happen, you know. I, I'm so lucky. I, I put it down to my right brain. My, somehow my right brain knows what's going on. Uh, I'm trying out stuff. Sometimes I'll just drag and drop something in. I wonder how that would go with that, you know. And, and it, it's, uh, you know, you couldn't have done it better if you planned it, you know, by chance operations. So the whole thing is, is a kind of... Uh, uh, joy, the only word I can have for it, uh, it's a, it fills me with joy and I lie awake at night too excited to sleep. I'm like a magician who doesn't know how the tricks work, you know. I'm as much amazed as anyone in the studio. If, if you were to see me <laughs> screaming and yelling in surprise, you wouldn't believe it. Uh, so I don't know what, how that's working whether it's the right brain knows these things. It's a, it's a form of uh, magic which uh, I can't fully uh, describe. Everyone talks about the Rite of Spring, 1913, uh, which changed everything. I, I think every composer should, in their minds, be thinking of their own Rite of Spring.